same and no two that are exactly the same. All right, that's what you're gonna be trying to do. Over here on this side, we'll actually start drawing or painting with a little technique. So what I want you to do is draw something similar to what I have here. Um, right here is a two and a half by three inch square. So draw that. We're gonna be doing some mark making techniques, basically kind of a reflection on water, maybe some clouds up in here, a little tiny composition. I just want you to draw a curved line. What we'll do on there is just practice painting a straight edge on one side of this. That's pretty easy to do. And then I want you to draw an image of some sort of a tree. Um, so I just did a small pine tree, just the basic shape, no details. Um, you can do whatever tree you want. You don't have to do the details of the branches. Just give me a trunk and the shape of the foliage. And then you want to have a light source pointing this direction will cast a shadow that way. All right, I will pause here and regroup. All right, folks, once you have your <clears throat> tree drawn, we're gonna start stippling. We're gonna try to make this dark to light. I'm using a smaller brush. Um, I won't start with white because that will just be a highlight. So what I want to do is just kind of make my white a little bit darker, add a touch more of the blue to it, and we'll kind of work it that way from dark to light. So this is a bit of an off-white I just made. <clears throat> and feel free to use your palette to mix different colors. It doesn't always have to be in these cups. You can take color up here if you want just a little bit to work with to make a different value. That way you don't have to contaminate everything and, and waste all your paints. Use a little here and there. All right, so I'm just gonna start stippling with that value. On this side, this is my light side. <clears throat> stippling is just creating texture with an up and down motion with your brush. And it'll just make it look kind of like a, a bush or a tree or whatever. So that's a good technique to use for that making foliage. I didn't need to mix anymore, but let me get a little more paint over in here. And then as I go, after I make the first initial area of stippling, I'll start adding a darker value as I go around this way. You don't have a straight edge here. You want that to be kind of fuzzy like that tree. And so what we're doing is pretty much a type of impressionism. We're just stippling with our brush to create the illusion or the impression of foliage, details, a tree, what have you. And the other goal is to not have any white areas that are still unpainted. That makes it look unfinished. So you gotta make sure you got paint everywhere on your painting. Okay, I'll just kinda feather it out into here. See how it's drying a little lighter? And then maybe I'll uh, <clears throat> paint kind of a, an edge of a line down here. Just get some values on there. All right, and what I'll do is I'll just get a little bit more paint right out into here, and I'll keep darkening this with that until I get closer to my blue. And so I'll just add a little bit more of this stuff to it. And then I'll stipple a row with that, or kind of a random shaped area. Let's see if that's a little darker. That's a little darker. You can come back later on and get it lighter going back that way if you want, or however you want to enhance it. Maybe I'll get a little bit of these shadows going down into here underneath. Give them a 
bottom edges of those branches are going to be a little darker. I'll grab a little more of that, put it in here. Maybe we'll just work with this one of these values. So this is how you create shading with paint. So you can keep working with all different values. You can use all the different values of your value scale to create the illusion. I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight up blue here. <clears throat> Pull some of that into that. Maybe again, there'll be a little bit of shading in some of those other areas too. And I'm gonna get it pretty dark on this side over here. Okay, and there's basically a little bit of a tree. Um, let's go in with our, we'll start with our black down at the base on this shadow. And just right here at the base, it's gonna be the darkest. And as it comes away, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. So you'll add blue into that. Gonna move some blue out into here, add some black into it, and I'll stipple that out a little further. I've got a big blob on my brush. Okay, about to here, I'll probably just go with my pure blue and then finish it off that way. So I want to make sure I clean everything off real good. I can kind of work back into it and it'll kind of blend as well. And after it dries, if I want to blend those edges, I just take a damp brush and go along them a little bit. Now, this one I don't really need to stipple shadow. I can just kind of paint it out because it's not going to be uh, textured like that tree. <coughs> All right, just a quick little way of doing a little bit of illusion of applying value. 
to make some realism. Um, let me just go over a damp brush right here on this edge and we'll kind of feather that. Get that to blend a bit. Okay. And I could go in and work on this tree a bit more if I wanted to, maybe get a little more shadows with the straight up blue in there. The more values you have, the more realistic things are gonna be. All right, I'll just add a bit more values into my tree of the dark values. So we have a little contrast, a little shading contrast. Now, generally when you're shading something, you don't want it to be stark black because sometimes it looks like a hole in the canvas versus basically a shadow. So be careful you don't overdo it, make it too dark, because it will look a little strange sometimes. And I'll just kind of do some random shading in here. Um, you got to keep it very random looking though, especially if you're stippling something. You stipple with the same exact pattern and the same exact amount of, of dots or stippling, it gets a little too uniform, especially if you're doing nature stuff. You want it to be pretty random. All right, I could go back out into here and put a little bit more values in the outside of my tree too. Maybe with a lighter value, that could be a good idea. And so I'll kind of <clears throat> add that lighter value. This will dry lighter, so not too worried about that. Maybe just on those lower areas. Now my, dress, my brush is a bit drier now, so it's making a little bit, uh, it's called dry brushing. It's making a little more texture if, if there's not so much paint on there. So there's something you can also do. So start experimenting with maybe when you're putting detail and foliage and things like that, use a little less paint. Let the brush make the marks and the texture as well. Okay, I'm gonna take a damp brush and just kind of uh, dole down some of these areas like right here. It's a little too, uh, too strong. So I'm just gonna kind of feather in this stuff with just a damp brush, kind of blend it out a little bit. And you can see it when the paint is dry, you can reactivate it with water and you can manipulate it a little bit. So those are some nice things to do with either gouache or tempera. I'm just softening some of those, some of that harsh, darker stuff in there that got a little too strong, maybe. All right, so those are some little techniques and things you need to know. Uh, what we're gonna do with this line here, <clears throat> I'm just gonna practice painting with a straight edge, kind of like what we did over here, but I don't care what it looks like on this side. I just want this edge to be nice. So grab whatever color you have whatever value you have, I should say. And try to run a nice edge of paint on there. Now again, if you've got too much paint, you're not gonna be able to control that edge. If you don't have enough, it's gonna be looking like that dry brushing I just did. So be careful on that. So again, push the tip of the brush to the line. And that's how you control it. When it starts feeling shaky or you're running out of paint, get it away from that edge. All right, I don't know if you just saw that. Let me try that again. Get the blob of paint off of there. Push the paint to the edge. Pull it away when it starts running out of paint or you get shaky. Doesn't matter what it looks like on this side, but we want a nice, crisp, clean edge right there. Okay, got it. All right, for this one, what I want you to do is paint a light blue background. And what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of water and clouds. And we'll do it with just making lines. We'll take a kind of a flat background first. 
Um, I'm just going to use a lighter version of blue here, so I'm going to get some of my white up into here. And then I'm going to paint this whole background area. I could probably use a bigger brush to do that. But I'm going to get a little bit of water into it as well to get that paint to move around a little quicker. Um, generally when you're doing a painting you want color on everything before you start putting in detail that's called an underpainting <clears throat> so consider this a painting once you get your overall outlines of things of drawing of your painting then you want to just get a base color for everything and then you're going to add detail and value to that problem with painting is some people like to paint shape to shape or edge to edge and then you're left with white specks of unpainted areas now if you paint background to foreground and cover any everything up you won't have that problem so right now we're kind of painting a whole entire background and so just get that filled up with one color of a lighter version of your whatever's in your palette let that dry all right you guys I'm back my uh, underpainting here has dried now I want to paint just kind of a seascape over the top of it I'm going to use a tiny brush to do that and I'm basically going to just make lines so these will be rapid brush strokes and I'm just creating the illusion of water. So I'm gonna use a few different values to do that. I'll start with a straight up blue. Need a little water in that blue. And I'll just paint some nice thin lines with my thin tiny brush to make it look like there's reflections on water. And I'm just doing them in random areas. And what I'll do is I'll just fill in a lot of values up there of different colored lines sorry different valued lines so we'll start with the dark blue you can see when my brush gets dry it gets texture so maybe with these i want more of a wet brush I was uh, on pause for a while, so my paint kind of dried up, but if you add water back to it, stir it up, it turns right back into usable paint. I'm just going to get a little more water into that cup. And stir it up good with my other brush here. Okay, that should be good. And I've thinned it out a bit, so it's gonna run off my brush quite a bit. When I say thinned it out, that means I've added water to it, so look how nice it flows off there. You can make nice, thin, fine lines. And this is another impressionistic style little piece here with uh, just strokes of lines to represent reflections and you know, darks and lights on the water. All right, I've got a good amount of the dark blue lines, and I'm going to fill it up with some other lines. Um, I have an uh, off-white here. If you have a white, you'll want to probably add that too. I'll use my little off-white here. It should stand out on that blue surface. And so this is going to kind of be the highlights and reflections shimmering off the surface of the water. And so generally you're only using white in painting when you are painting a reflection. So everything else should be 
a value. Even white objects or things like that, they really aren't truly white. They're, you know, probably more of a, a light gray or a, a slight color to it. So the only thing white will be a reflection. Keep that in mind as we continue to paint. I'm out of pure white, so I'm just going to go with this. But if you have pure white, add that in there. And again, you're just adding different values of lines. The more values of lines you have in there, the more uh, variation of reflections, uh, the more interesting, more contrast it's going to have. All right, I'll go in with a little bit of my darker values of blue here. I don't think I added that one yet. All right, and then I'll have a good base for just kind of a standard water seascape. And we'll do some stippling for clouds. And the more you fill in this space, the more realistic it gets. If you have some flat areas that haven't had any texture in there, it might look a little odd. So I might do this and then go in with my lightest value again. Sometimes if you uh, lengthen and shorten your lines, maybe the lines will be a little longer up close, a little shorter back there. They give you the uh, illusion of depth. I didn't really do that on this, but again, this is impressionism. So it's not totally realistic on the realistic side, but it's an impression of realism. Okay, so I've got a nice little ocean going there. I'll just go in with my lightest value again, just to enhance some contrast, fill in any little gaps that I've got. You have white do that. And I might kind of blend in some of these as well. Make sure you're going to your edge too. Not everything should be inside that edge. You should use that edge. All right. I'm gonna take a little bit larger round brush and I'm gonna stipple some clouds. They're just gonna be hanging out in the background above that seascape there. So I'll get uh, this rounded brush, this is my number six here. And I've got a, a little bit of an off-white. If you have white, you can use that. Now, clouds are generally flat on the bottom. Depends on what cloud you got. And then they have a little bit of lift on the top edge. Now, if a cloud is further in the background, it's gonna be smaller and closer to the horizon. If it's closer to us, it's gonna be higher and larger. I should probably get a pure white in my back in my palette. You want to kind of keep these a little bit random. Same types of clouds will generally have the same kind of overall shape. This one will be a little bit higher, closer. Kind of keep it somewhat flat on the bottom. And a lot of lift on the top part. It's okay to have a few different values on your clouds too. They should be darker on the bottom, lighter on top, depending on where the sun is located up in your sky. And I'll put one really small, way far away, closer to the horizon here. All right, so there you go. You got a little bit of depth in here now. This one, I'm not gonna put any extra detail into it. This one, I'll probably get a few more layers so it's a little bit more opaque. Maybe I'll extend it to the edge there, touch that edge. 
And then what I'd want to do is maybe uh, darken up the bottom half of it. So I'm going to add a little blue to some white in here. Might have that color already somewhere. And maybe stipple a little bit of value into the bottom of that. Maybe do that on this one. Now the clouds have a little bit of a shadow on the bottom. Went ahead and got a little bit of pure white back in my palette. So I'm gonna stipple just on the very top of those clouds and it'll brighten them up a little bit. Depending on where the light source is. I think it's up higher in the sky on this one here. And just to generate, generate a little bit of realism here in this small little composition. All right, we're about done with this. I'm gonna just add a few lines into my reflections with the bright white here and there. Just add that little contrast. All right, I think we're good. There's just some basic techniques for you. Make sure you take care of your value scale. Um, try to paint a nice, crisp, clean edge. Do a little stippling and some shading and some mark making techniques as well. All right, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, have a great day, we'll see you next time.